This is a review of the skeletal system, which is divided into two parts. The axial skeleton includes the skull, the thoracic cage, which is the ribs and the sternum, and also the vertebral column. The appendicular skeleton is the bones of the appendages, which are the arms and the legs, and also the girdles that keep the arm and leg bones attached to the axial skeleton. I'll start by reviewing the major bones and bone markings of the skull, and this includes the cranial bones and the facial bones. Okay, this is a review of the human skull. So we are going to start with the major cranial bones. You can see the frontal bone that forms the forehead. Forming the top of the skull, you have the two parietal bones on the sides of the skull, right here and right here. These are the temporal bones and in the back of the skull right here is the occipital bone. There are sutures that you can see on the skull and these are connections between the cranial bones. So these tightly fuse the cranial bones together. The first one you can see here is called the coronal suture and that connects the frontal bone to the two parietal bones. Right here, separating the two parietal bones, going right down the top of the skull, is the sagittal suture. And then on both sides, you have the squamous suture, connecting the temporal bone to the parietal bones. Same thing on this side. Here's the squamous suture. And then in the back of the skull, along the occipital bone, connecting the occipital bone to the two parietal bones, you have the lambdoidal suture right here. Okay, those are the cranial bones that form the cranium. And then we have facial bones forming the rest of the skull. So we have right here the two nasal bones. They form the top portion of the nose, the bridge of the nose. Inside, right here, and right here, inside the eye socket, you have the lacrimal bones. They are two very small bones on the medial side of the orbit. Right here, which forms part of the nasal septum, this is called the vomer. This very thin, pointed bone is the vomer. These bones here and here are the zygomatic bones. They are the cheekbones. Okay, right here we have the maxilla. These form the upper jaw. And then down here, this is one bone called the mandible. That forms the lower jaw. Separated into, divided into different parts. This vertical section is called the ramus of the mandible. Right here where it curves is called the angle. This part down here, basically the chin, is called the body of the mandible. Same thing on the other side, ramus, angle, body. The holes that you can see in the skull are called foramen. Any hole in a bone is called a foramen. There are several that are visible in the facial bones. These are called supraorbital foramen. These are in the frontal bone. They're located above the orbit. That's why they're called supraorbital foramen. Down here and here, you have infraorbital foramen. Those are below the orbit, so that's why they're called infraorbital foramen, because they're inferior. And then these two holes in the mandible, these are called the mental foramen. The anatomical or regional term for the chin is called mental, so they're called the mental foramen. Now we'll go over two of the irregular bones that are found in the skull. The first one is called the sphenoid bone, and you can see the sides of it right here in front of the temporal bone 
and it goes across inside the skull, so it's behind the frontal bone, to the other side. And here's the other side of the sphenoid bone right here. You can also see parts of it inside of the orbit. So here's what the sphenoid bone looks like when it's isolated from the skull. It looks kind of like a bat and it is divided up into a few parts that have specific names. So this entire thing is the sphenoid bone. These pieces right here and here, these are called the greater wings. And then above those, here and here, are the lesser wings of the sphenoid. Lesser wings, greater wings. This entire middle section of the sphenoid bone, this is called the body of the sphenoid. And within the body, see this depression, okay, this groove right in the middle? That's called the cella tersica. That name means Turk's saddle. Looks kind of like a saddle since it's a groove right here. And then these two pieces of bone that hang down from the body, these are called the pterygoid processes. So they look kind of like legs. Also, you can see a few foramen on the sphenoid bone. The two right here and here that are underneath the lesser wings, those are the optic foramen. It's called the optic foramen. That's where the optic nerve passes through. And then there are two other foramen. Okay, the one that's right here that has sort of an oval shape. Okay, it's on both sides. That's called the foramen oval, right here and right here. And then the foramen spinosum is the tiny hole right here that's right next to it and here. So foramen oval, foramen spinosum. The other irregular bone that's found within the skull is called the ethmoid bone, and it's located behind the nasal bones and in between the eyes. So it's behind here. You can see a little part of it down here if you look inside the nasal cavity. So this is what the ethmoid bone looks like separated from the skull. This is the front side. This is the top superior side. Okay, here are the sides of the ethmoid bone. Okay, there are two parts of the ethmoid bone that you need to know. Okay, first, you can see this piece of bone that sticks up. This is on the superior side of the ethmoid bone. This is called the crystagalli. So it's a thin piece of bone. You can see it pretty well right here. That's the crystagalli. On either side where you see these holes, on either side of the crystagalli, that's called the cribiform plate. Okay, so crystagalli is the bone that sticks up on the superior side, and on either side of that is the cribiform plate. Okay, so here's a view from the side. Here's a view from the front and looking down at it from the top. Crystagalli, cribiform plate on either side.